in the north, in the Jabalia refugee camp, where Israeli troops are again engaged in street battles with Hamas fighters. Around 1.4 million Palestinians are sheltering in Rafah, most of them children and women. It is a de designated safe zone. Intensified Israeli bombardments in the eastern part of the city, though, have already caused tens of thousands to be displaced again. Let's speak to William F. Weichler. He is Senior Direct Weschler, I beg your pardon, Senior Director at the Middle East Atlantic Council. Thank you for being with us uh, this evening. Um, I, I wonder if I could just get you to make a, a comment, first of all, on, on the tenor of um, Memorial Day today. As I say, it's one of those days when the country tends to come get together. But there, there seems to be now um, a creeping sense that the government doesn't fully have a plan to end this and doesn't know what the next day will look like. That's absolutely true. Um, this day in Israel is, is all for years been one that brings the entire country together. It's um, uh, unheard of to imagine, uh, to imagine in previous circumstances that this would be a moment for division, even if it is a relatively small number of people who took the opportunity to protest, some silently, some quite vocally. It is evidence of the divisions that underlie uh, Israeli society. Even as there is unity on the overall war aims, there is disunity around this government in Israel. Yeah. Do, does what they, they've done so far in Rafa constitute for you the, the full ground offensive that Joe Biden has warned about? No, it is not the, the full ground offensive that Joe Biden warned about. What Joe Biden was concerned about was the Israel having the exact same strategy in Rafah that they had in Khan Yunus. If they did that with a population of 1.4 million packed densely into an urban environment, it would have ended up with tens of thousands of more deaths. Um, so thus far, it seems that Israel is not approaching Rafah in the same way, but is uh, approaching it in a more incremental manner. And we've seen, uh, depending on the news sources, between 350 and 500,000 people leave Rafa uh, more recently. Yeah. Um, those concerns that, that we've talked about within Israel, seemingly, according to BBC reporting today, are now being heard within the military, that there is this no, that there is no day after plan. Um, uh, Secretary Blinken has sort of touched on that today, talking about the anarchy that might ensue. And now we have fighting in Jabalia, which was supposedly an area of Gaza that had been, in inverted commas, cleansed of Hamas fighters. The Israel military strategy, in my view, um, has gotten a lot of criticisms that are unwarranted. But there are certain criticisms that are warranted. And the most important of those is that after clearing an area, they have not held on the area. And if you, the reason why you hold an area is not only so that you can abide by your uh, responsibilities under international law to provide basic security and sustenance for the people, but it's also to prevent your adversary from coming back into the area. And that's exactly what's happened is that their adversary, Hamas, has been able to regroup in areas that Israel spent a lot of blood and treasure to clear in the first place. And that's a military mistake. Congress comes back tomorrow. Uh, there are clearly deep divisions uh, there over the decision to pause aid to Israel. Uh, but what do you make of the sort of rhetoric we're now hearing from the Secretary of State and from the White House? That rhetoric really is uh, reflective of the underlying frustration that I hear from my friends in the White House and at the State Department with um, Bibi Netanyahu's government. It is not a division on the military objective. The United States and Israel share the objective of Israel going into Rafa and, and um, taking out, or at least making uh, military non-effective, the remaining four brigades that Hamas has there, taking out the uh, tunnel infrastructure and trying to continue to decapitate the organization. Where the Biden administration has had sharp divisions is that there has been no plan for months now for coming from Jerusalem for how this campaign is going to be done inside of Rafah. And then on top of that, there's been no plan for the day after, the day after in terms of security within and governance within Gaza, and then the longer day after 
of addressing the underlying Israeli and, policy. And that issue of the, 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 the plan to evacuate civilians from Rafah, Secretary Blinken again saying over the weekend that, that he'd, he'd like to see the plan, 350,000 people were told already on the move, to an area on the coast road that, that, that isn't really a safe zone. It's, a, it's effectively a beach and it is highly dependent on the aid coming through the one uh, Gaza crossing that is still open at the moment. Is there now concern mounting again within the State Department, the White House, that, that this is, is going to look pretty bad? It will. The, the, the original plans, as, as, um, as, as uh, inadequate as they were, were reasonably effective, um, d despite the horror and tragedy that we see every day on our television screens. Those original plans for the, for the previous phases of the war were to move people south. You can't move people south anymore. Because in, in Rafa, because you'd be going into Egypt, and that would turn internal displacement into ethnic cleansing. So they have to go somewhere else. Yeah. Israel's not going to bring them into Israel, okay. so they have to go elsewhere into into Gaza. Okay. The problem is, is that the other places are not population centers. Yeah. So if they're going to bring them there, then they William have Wexler, to. William Wexler, I'll have to end it there because we are tied up against a break. But